Oh, sorry, didn't realize that we were live. Hey, how you doing? Welcome back to Undertaker 365. I'm your host, Jacob Vandenberg, a licensed funeral director here at Vandenberg Funeral Home. This is our viewer discretion advised message. Please, this information and video and content we're just giving to you as a viewer uh, should be taken as an advisement that we are talking about some serious issues, um, serious content, and viewer discretion is advised. So please, read our message, follow us, uh, understand that the information that we're giving to you is solely my opinion, the opinion of Undertaker365 and myself, Jacob Vandenberg, as well as the field experts that we bring into our content and to our series. It's their information, it's their opinion. Um, so we are advising you that that is solely what we're doing out of full transparency. Really hope you're enjoying the series and we'll talk to you soon. cup. Today's taste for me is Cinnabon Classic Cinnamon Roll. Put that inside the machine. Pop that baby down. 10 ouncer. She's a brewing. I'm get my stir. So every cup of coffee deserves a little cream and sugar. <clears throat> just a tad. Just to get the, the flavors. The best part of waking up is a K-pot in my cup. I just made that up. Oh, remember when we were doing the boxing, the unboxing, the reveal? Check this out. Watch. Let's see if we get the cinematographer to get this. Watch the K-pot go into bar back garbage. I mean, I don't have to dispose that K-pot now. See? That's pretty cool. Because, honestly, there's only a couple in there. Yeah, I emptied it the other day. Oh, you did? <laughs> You're a gentleman in the sky. Thank you. Probably should throw that baby in the wash today. This bin? The bin. This little rack. I'm just look at the wash. Take fifteen. Time to go sit in the garage and talk. <laughs> <sighs> Woods. Employee retreats. Employee retreats. <clears throat> Sights and sounds of Tinley Park. <laughs> so, uh, we got that call. Yeah. What's wrong? Did you not sleep last night? Yeah, you What's your attitude all about? You got a little attitude right now. I can see it on your face. What? You're lying to me. Hello? My attitude came when you got here. Two ways to do it, thanks. No problem. Take care of that, would you? Yeah, take it out your dirty trash. Yep. Meanwhile. Morticia, man. My nanny, she, she proves. Morticia, she likes it, huh? Yeah. I think it's going to be a big hit, dude. Now, are you getting graphics for the side, too? Yeah, I'm still deciding on how I want to do this. I don't know if I want to have it kind of redone on the outside. Uh huh. Same flat black. 
for Seriously? Bring back more of a classic look. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I'm kind of in between. Got a little water on the floor here. Got a little water on the floor here, Rome's. Oh yeah. The rain pretty oh, wow. Might have to treat it like a convertible. bringing the life a little bit. I don't know, maybe I can get away with it. It looks Probably. better without the graphics, but the Halloween graphics that we had. Oh yeah, I saw that in the window. It looks better without them on there, you know. I love the uh, cross with the skull on the back. You don't like it? Well, I mean, it depends on what you're looking for, you know? <laughs> Close the back door. I heard some. Oh, right oh, there. The handle. The, the handle. Yeah. One hour later. So, in the midst of the COVID-19 global pandemic, 
uh, the funeral home here at Vandenberg Funeral Home has had to adjust a little bit on how we conduct our services via arrangement conferences, via our funeral services that we offer to families. And one of the great things that we're utilizing outside of Facebook Live options for families is a program called Zoom. Uh, Zoom is a tele-audio video conference that we're able to set up and send via email to the families we're serving. Um, most recently, we actually conducted an arrangement conference as well as a funeral service for a family um, that had requested that, having up to 65 to 70 participants. So pretty incredible that we're able to bring the funeral service to people not physically able to attend, um, given the circumstances and the mandates that are um, put upon us by this by the state government uh, today we're going to be doing a zoom conference with the family for arrangements we we're going to be going over the various services that we offer as funeral directors in a funeral home and we're going to do that all in the comfort of a tele video conference um, a critical tool that we're able to bring to the families that we're servic servicing here at the funeral home um, without it we'd be doing things the old-fashioned way via telephone and Although that is effective, um, being able to show a face and be together, um, not physically, but via a computer source, um, adds a, a completely different emotional element to uh, the arrangement conference that we're going to be doing today. So, um, very effective tool that we're utilizing here at Vandenberg Funeral Home, um, and, and we're, we're grateful that it's working out thus far. And we hope that the families that we're servicing appreciate the fact that we're trying to take the steps that are uh, that are necessary to build that relationship between the funeral directors, the staff, and then obviously the family. So uh, we have an arrangement here shortly, and it's time to start prepping. Thank you. Of the patients with, that are seriously ill from COVID, did not have a fever. I thought that was one of the. That was the first sim one of the first symptoms of high fever. Now they're saying two thirds of them have huh. that have no fever at all. That's a good thing because I feel feel warm right now. You probably gotta go number two. <laughs> yep. Alright, I'm gonna head uh head to Skyline. So we're on our way to Skyline Memorial. We have a couple cremations to drop off there. We actually have one there to pick up as well. So we will be picking uh, the remains up today and uh, the family should be coming in sometime this afternoon to, uh, to pick up the remains. The next day... Time to change, guys. Turn all the lights on here. We have the uh, 
the arrangement area here. Um, currently, kind of we have it set up for a little social distancing. If we had to make arrangements um, face to face, um, so it's uh, again the funeral is just trying to adapt to, to to the new times right now, and it's uh, it's quite uh, quite different. So both of our funerals are totally two different buildings. We have a, um, an old house here in Mokina, uh, which is a lot of antiques. It's an older, older setting, older, it's, it's just, it's, a, it's an older uh, feeling. So this piece right here uh, came from uh, Florida. Um, I believe it was Florida. It's either Georgia or Florida. Uh, my grandfather would, uh, would head down to Florida for the winter months. Um, he would always drive down there in his uh, convertible Mustang. And uh, he always would stop at uh, flea markets and, and whatnot. Uh, and one time he was driving back and stopped at a flea market, saw this and said that'd be perfect for the funeral in Mokina. So he loaded up in his uh, two door Mustang and, and drove back here to, um, to Mokina. Um, the original house that was here uh, was built in 1940. Um, the one of my grandfather uh, bought the house and built the back half of the chapel on here. Um, there's a couple pictures here uh, that, that kind of show all the work being done. Um, you know the parking lot that's here. Um, there was you know was there was a bunch of trees there, so we had to uh, you know knock down the trees here to make make room for the parking lot. Um, there's a whole lot. A lot of it is is pretty much the same. Uh, the front of the front of the house is pretty much the same. Um, I'm trying to see where the one picture is at here. There's my grandpa here, um, with I believe it's my cousin um, doing some work out here in the parking lot when they were building here. Um, the the end down here would be the the, the chapel um, that they added on the back of the house here. Uh, so you can kind of see what it, what the front of the house is now compared to what it was in 1940. Um, it's pretty much, uh, we kept everything pretty much the same. Hello. 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 How are you? Good, how are you? Good. We got the family work here? Yes. This is what this is? So this part of the, uh, from, from right here to the back of the building here, uh, this was the, 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 the chapel that my, that my grandfather built onto the existing house here. Um, a couple years ago, my dad uh, made this entrance to the, to the home um, more welcoming. He wanted to kind of make it a little bigger of an entrance uh, because right here it actually was the, uh, the entrance to get up into the house. Um, so he wanted to, you know, make it more known and more uh, welcoming for families that are here if, attending a visitation to come up to the house um, to see all the, the antiques and to kind of make it uh, feel more more comfortable, more at home. Um, downstairs is the lounge. Come on, let's go check it out. So downstairs here, um, it's a huge area. Families love it down here. Um, they can bring in, you know, other kinds of foods, pops, bathrooms are down here. Um, it's, uh, it's definitely a nice little gathering area for, for children um, if, if they're uh, attending a visitation. Um, it's a, uh, again, it's, it's, uh, it's the big room to, to congregate a little bit, have a sandwich, some cookies. Um, whatever, you, whatever you guys want to hey, do. Welcome back to Undertaker 365. I'm your host, Jacob Vandenberg, a licensed funeral director and embalmer in the state of Illinois. Uh, this is our newest segment of our series called A Drive Around with an Undertaker. So a series of questions have been coming into our show, uh, and I'm about to go over episode two of this uh, question and answer. So our first question is... So the question that most people ask regarding funeral homes 
uh, typically are based around ghosts experience or any type of paranoia paranormal uh, experiences or anything like that uh, the answer to that is no I have never had an experience um, an out-of-body experience or an experience with any type of ghostly behaviors um, and that is going as far back as my early childhood uh, when I would be hanging out at the funeral home with my grandma and grandpa uh, because they lived upstairs um, of the funeral home in downtown Tinley Park never had any experiences and to this day um, never had any experiences that uh, make me concerned or aware of any type of uh, paranormal activity. So as I mentioned in the previous episode, uh, one of the underlining factors for the funeral services, yet we are a business, um, we do collect money from individuals for funeral services. So the question is what to do if the individual has no money. Um, this is the part of the business that is probably the hardest. We do not want to sound callous. We do not want to sound under, misunderstood, misunderstood or not that we're understanding at all of the scenario. However, the services that funeral homes provide do require there to be a payment. So the options are in the state of Illinois, um, if an individual is on public aid, um, there is a cost benefit resource available to them. However, some funeral homes may not accept it uh, because there is a time delay on payment from public aid. Uh, keeping in mind that does not cover full funeral expenses for traditional funerals. Um, typically it covers what they would call just a direct burial or a simple bur burial uh, with minimal services. So that is the one option that you have. Um, from the state resources. Second to that, you'd have, uh, if you're working with a funeral home specifically, if they're able to accept any type of insurance policy uh, as a form of payment, if the person doesn't have any direct uh, financial resources, they may or may not have an insurance policy, of which I think I covered in the previous video, um, that there's an assignment that could be applied to a funeral bill. So do you have to call the police if there's a sudden death? Um, the answer is you should call 911. Um, given the scenario, I mean, this is an extremely complex question. Um, sometimes it, people pass away at home, um, whether they be underneath some type of health care or hospice care, the, the, you would not call 911 in those type of scenarios. You would call your nurse or your hospice agency. But if, for instance, you found somebody deceased in their home, and they were not under, underneath doctor's care or, or some type of health care or palliative care, you should call 911. They are the first responders. Um, they would be the ones that would be deciding over the, 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 the proper jurisdiction or transfer that would be from, um, from the location of the deceased to whether it be the coroner's office or the medical examiner's office or in some scenarios directly to the funeral. So a very complex question. Long story short, you should call 911. Uh, the question has been if there are other individuals that can assist in planning funerals. Um, in the state of Illinois, it is a law that a professional licensed funeral director be the one to handle the arrangements uh, for funeral planning. However, um, there are some gray areas to that conversation, specifically when it relates to pre-arranging or pre-planning a funeral. Um, I know that there are insurance companies that have uh, insurance rep representatives that are going out to the community and, 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 and selling a product to individuals. And during that time, they're going over the planning process of the funeral. Um, but to be very specific, a licensed funeral director um, in the state of Illinois specifically should be the only one that you're dealing with to directly plan a funeral. Well, the conversation of uh, whether or not cremation is right for you or your family is a personal one. Um, it, it's gonna come down to, in my opinion, multiple 
um, multiple reasonings for, for why you would choose cremation. Um, I think there's this, this uh, I don't want to say urban myth, but there's this connotation that uh, cremation is cheaper than burial and, and, and in a very broad stroke conversation that is true. However, cremation can be just as expensive as burial depending upon the service types that you select. So to, to eliminate the conversation of financial reasonings, the other reasons for deciding on cremation or not is uh, probably more based off of a faith base. Um, uh, up until, uh, I believe it was the Second Vatican uh, Council, uh, cremation rites inside the Catholic faith were not accepted. Um, following that, they opened up cremation rites as being a proper way of disposition of a human remains with several um, breakdowns of that. And one of them being that the body be consecrated in a, in a Catholic mass uh, during the Catholic funeral ritual. And secondly, that the remains be buried, um, the cremated remains be buried in the ground and consecrated ground at a Catholic cemetery. So cremation still is acceptable. Um, and then in many practices, cremation is the only um, option that people choose. So the question is, how do I know if it's right for my family? That is solely a question that you need to answer with your family uh, regarding multiple things that I just mentioned. Do you have to have a funeral? Um, again, funeral, the word, the word funeral um, relates to so many different service types within the funeral service. Um, again, very broad stroke comment or question. However, if you were looking at it in the case of funeral meaning service um, or like religious service, the answer would be no, you do not have to have a funeral service. Um, if that's something that you and your family do not find value in or don't hold dear your heart, then no, you do not have to have a funeral service. Now, if the word funeral were to mean uh, visitation or viewing or memorial, um, the answer to that as well is no, you do not have to have that. Um, when it relates to funerals and afterlife conversation, the main gist of your conversation is disposition. Disposition meaning burial or cremation. So you have those two options, I think, are the number one thing that needs to be discussed with you and your family regarding what it is that you want done. And then you could discuss on whether or not you want to have a funeral service ritual, a visitation, a memorial, a celebration of life, and then we start planning from there. Um, well, very simply, I mean, most of the funeral home websites uh, would have uh, the opportunity to download or to go over a funeral checklist. Certainly calling the funeral home, they could mail one to you, you could stop in and pick one up. Um, Funeral checklists are, 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 again, they could be very detailed or they could be very basic. It's generally just trying to get your mind going to discuss the afterlife conversation. It's not a, um, it's not a, a, a step by step process. Um, it's generally there to, to start to get your, your mind going towards what it is that you or your family would like to do following your, following your death. Uh, my role as a funeral director and embalmer um, at the funeral home is it, it, very complex. It starts from the f moment that a family or a nursing facility or a hospital calls the funeral home, engages the funeral home in taking care of somebody that's passed away, um, the removal process, the embalming process, meeting the family and go over, going over the arrangements, um, planning and scheduling and ordering all the different things that are required to fulfill that. Uh, service that they have requested. Um, it's going to be dressing, cosmetizing, casketing of the remains um, if they're going to be buried or if they're going to be cremated with a viewing. What's going to be scheduling and handling all of the vital statistics. In Illinois, we use the Illinois Vital Record System. That takes care of the death certificate process. So the, the, the funeral director is kind of the quarterback when it comes to handling the death certificate from getting the information from the family, to getting the doctor to sign the death certificate, to filing it in the county of passing, that all flows through the funeral director. So the director is handling every facet from the beginning to the very end 
of the discussion of funeral services. And then you segue into what does a director do during a visitation, during a funeral service, during a burial. They are literally the person that is handling step-by-step -step processes um, in regarding to logistics, in regarding to transportation, regarding directing families where to go and how to do it, um, making announcements, saying prayers, um, anything that you've seen in the past when it comes to uh, traditional funerals or funeral that you've been a part of, the funeral director has literally taken step-by-step -step, um, uh, action to make that happen. So all the way up into the right of disposition, whether that be burial or cremation, your funeral director is handling every facet of that service. Um, I, I, this is an this is a older older school question. Um, what to look for when you're choosing a funeral home? Um, I'm I'm going to be very biased on this. We are a small family business. We have been since its inception. Um, we will continue to operate that way. When it comes to funeral homes today, you have small family businesses, and then you have corporate funeral homes. Um, I won't get into the specifics of what I think is right and wrong. I will just speak to how we operate. Um, as I've mentioned in the past, when you call our funeral home, you're dealing with basically a direct relative or a Vandenberg as it relates to um, our funeral service. So I think that's extremely important. I think that's something that somebody should look for when they're choosing a funeral home. It should be a very comfortable conversation. It shouldn't be very, it shouldn't be corporate. It shouldn't feel very commercialized. It should feel, you should feel comfortable and understanding. Um, obviously compassion is important when you're dealing with this, but also you're looking for think people that are answering your questions fully and accurately. And they're not trying to you know, get you to come in through the door before you make a decision. They're trying to answer your questions as best as they can via the phone or email, however, however which way you're communicating with them. The other thing I think it's important is that you know a lot of funeral homes probably hide behind their prices. Um, you know, and, and in order to get their accurate pricing, you have to request a general price list um, in person or going into the funeral home. You know, for me at our funeral home, our price is on our website. We 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 don't hide behind our our prices at all. It's very open and transparent. Um, when we put our price list out there we put our name on the top of it because we believe that actually the services that we're providing, they have a cost and that cost is what we put in black and white. Um, a part of that too, we have a, in our website, we have a build my, uh, price my funeral or build my funeral. Um, again, it's another tool available so families feel comfortable knowing what it is they're selecting, what how they're approaching it and how it's gonna, what it's gonna cost at the end. Again, open, honest, transparent conversation regarding end of life conversation and planning. Um, again, this is probably more of a traditional question. Um, up until five, 10 years ago, when I first started getting really heavily involved in the business, actually it's longer than that, 10 to 15 years ago now, um, funerals typically took place within three to four or five days after somebody's passing. Um, that, however, has changed drastically. We live in a world now where people are, are planned out their schedule for months and weeks upon on end. Um, they have vacations and they have different business trips they have to attend to. So it's, it's, it's harder for people to schedule funeral services when somebody does pass. So that has changed from the three, four, five day time frame. Um, people are now planning out weeks at a time. And again, a lot of that has to do with the manner of disposition. So whether it be burial, cremation, um, a lot of it might have to do with simple timing, dependent upon holidays and et cetera. I mean, there, there's a lot more that goes into it um, nowadays than it did back, you know, 15, 20 years ago when, when somebody passed away, we kind of dropped everything and, 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 and as, as a society, we dropped everything and we planned that service and we, we dedicated, dedicated ourselves to, you know, two, three full days of mourning and, and handling funeral services. Not to say that we don't put value in that today. However, our society has changed drastically um, in, in regards to how do we plan out our lives and logistics. All right, so there you go. We have a couple more questions that came in. Um, I hope that I answered some of those as best as I could. Again, our purpose here is to give you information, um, firsthand information from the source, funeral directors and balmers. I'm giving you my opinion, trying to make it as accurate as possible. And obviously I'm basing a lot off a lot off of what our practices are at Vandenberg Funeral Home. So I encourage you to continue to send those questions in to us. We're going to continue to do this every week or every other week, the best as we can. And uh, until then, we'll see you then. Thanks. 
Hey, welcome back. This is your host, Jacob Vandenberg of Undertaker 365. Well, there you have it. Another series, another message. Hope you're really enjoying the content that we're providing to you. Hope that it's informative and educational and that it's uh, clearing up some of these misconceptions regarding what's going on in the funeral industry. I want to just leave you with a small message that I'd ask you to continue to follow us on Facebook, on our YouTube page, on our website, hashtag Undertaker365. On Facebook, you could find some awesome branded content and material that we're putting out there and products, t-shirts, uh, koozies. Um, we're going to have some other, we have some logos, some stickers, and etc. So just continue to follow us on Facebook. If you're enjoying what you watch, please give us a follow, give us a share. Um, this information can't get out there without you um, as a viewer enjoying the information and, and, and the content and sharing it with your friends. So on that behalf, we'll see you next time. Talk to you soon.